dislodging action for Assange. We should be going live. Let's make sure it's kicking in. Is it kicking in? There we are, there we are. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to the live stream. Today, today is June 5th, 2021. And we're doing a one-off reading, um, comic book reading. Uh, it's a comic book that we picked up on a previous comic book haul. I think it was an important read. Um, I was very happy to get this in my collection. I didn't know this existed before I started bidding on this comic book a lot. And um, I believe it was comic book, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, comic book haul. Which comic book haul was it? I think it was comic book haul number 45. I mentioned it in our Discord. Um, let me see if I can find it. <laughs> let's check it out let's check it out i think it was comic book hall number uh, 45 uh but i'll just confirm that uh, ba -ba -ba. because it was an amazing comic book hall uh we got a whole bunch of comics and yeah comic book hall number 45 okay and in this a lot we ended up um, picking up uh lone wolf cub number one first print we picked picked up uh, the first series of the meta bear and these single issues we picked up a whole bunch of independent comic books um, and uh, we picked up real war stories number one and number two and I was interested in this I did uh, when I usually bid on lots and stuff like this I look up some of the comics that they have that's how I do some of my research actually uh, trying to find out what there is right and I was very pleasantly surprised as to see what was in this who was doing the artwork in this what stories were being told and the main story that I want to read in this comic book is uh, war is a racket by General Smithley Butler uh, a book by General Smithley Butler it's a book that we did a reading for uh, Halit how are you doing hope you're doing well and this is the you'll find a link for that book reading that we did on our patreon page because initially i did the reading for wars a racket by general smutley butler in 2017. i read the book years before right and it's available for free online but we did a reading of general smutley butler's wars a racket and he wrote this book and general smutley butler if you don't know he was a most decorated uh, marine in u.s history for a number of decades i'm doing great thank you <laughs> uh, so it's a, a great weekend great weekend uh, to do a nice comic book reading here anyway it's sort of cloudy cold outside rain a little right but that book by general smithley butler he he wrote a book basically he was uh, a marine and he served in the military for a lifetime really and after serving in the military and during serving in the military i'm not sure if he wrote the book while he was in the military or after he was a retired uh, he basically wrote that the u.s military is used as the enforcer uh, the brute force for american corporations on behest of the on behest of the american corporations the government sends them into different parts of the world to take over land and resources and and whatnot which is basically what's been going on forever right which is basically what's going on now which is to me is amazing that people still support war uh support these corporations support centralized government to wage war to annihilate nations and kill hundreds of thousands if not millions of people around the world and displace tens of millions because of some kind of illusion uh programming sort of on the level of MK Ultra, where they actually believe that they're doing the right thing, which to me is mind boggling, right? Um, and I didn't know War is a Racket had been converted into comic book or adapted as a comic book format reading. So I really wanted to, I was very happy to pick this up and I wanna do the reading for this, okay? Profit though, false war, through false wars, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy right so there is 
you know, one story that I want to read in this, which is an eight pager. And General Smedley Butler's book is very short, and we linked it up. The reading that we did, we linked it up with ASMR mathematics and investing. You know, we did the numbers on it, right? So we linked it up with mathematics. Uh, so I had, you know, little equations there showing all the numbers and whatnot. Um, pretty important. And there's a whole bunch of other people that have worked on this. Uh, on this anthology there is uh, how many one two three four uh, five six different stories in this anthology there are uh, veterans war Vietnam War veterans that have worked on this um, activists that have worked on this anti-war activists that have worked on this peace activists that have worked on this uh, people that uh, sort of are truth tellers that have worked on this so I looked at some of the people uh, that are that have you know either done the artwork or that wrote the script on this. Wow, wow, wow! I didn't know some of these people, right? Kebabs, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Uh, like for example, um, the first story is written by Jim Narex Narex. I'm sorry, brutalizing the name. And the pencils and the inks, the artwork and the colors is done by Bill. Sik once I don't know how to pronounce them, but it's the, it's the same guy that worked on uh, produced the Dune miniseries, and he's in the 1980s. Uh, he's considered to be one of the, the you know, uh, very unique artists, and sort of uh, broke the mold when it came to comic book uh, creating art for comic books and storytelling because of the painted covers and painted. Uh, pages that he did right and he's worked on a lot of different things and a lot of artists look uh, to his pieces for inspiration I really like the artwork and the cover. yeah the artwork is uh, um, for the cover is uh, Paul uh, Golasi okay and he's also worked on a number of uh, comic books for a number of years uh, considered to be an amazing artist considered to be an amazing artist some of the other people that have worked on this uh, Todd Ensign Rebecca Huntington um, Smedley Butler is War is a Racket adapted by Joyce Joyce Branber okay now who's Joyce Branber Joyce Brand Branber is an anti-war activist and the widow of Harvey Peckar and Harvey Peckar was a person that came up with American Splendor like the links in this series go deep like wow I was looking this stuff up I'm like crazy right and the artwork for War is a Racket is done by Wayne Van uh, Sant and he did a lot of war comic books and he's a Vietnam veteran what work with uh, certain uh, veterans group that are uh, pro-peace anti-war like i kept on reading like i did i don't know a couple of hours of reading of who some of the people were that have worked on this piece right um some of the other uh, writers uh, uh the next story kim the third story is written by kim yale and the pencils art is by done by dean motter uh the there's one pagers in this um like crazy uh there's another piece called uh done by greg banson stefan uh stefan stefano did the artwork for it uh, another piece uh, done by joyce braber again um and the artwork by dennis um, francis uh, mike w Barr did the story for the last one and mark uh, badger did the artwork for it like you, you keep on reading this was amazing randall thank you very much for the tier one sub for 22 months in a row woo woo <laughs> thanks for the support brother very much appreciate it right very much appreciate it and uh one of the other things i found out about this which just blew me away right blew me away now this comic book is by eclipse comics right it's a comic book publishing company that came out in I guess late 1970s 1980s early 1990s and then they went bankrupt they closed shop during the distributor wars in the early 1990s right so I think 1992 or 1993 Eclipse comic went defunct they closed doors right in in the mid 1990s check this out in the mid 1990s Todd McFarlane 
bought their library, the rights to their published works, for how much? For $25,000. Todd McFarlane in the mid-1990s bought all the rights for the whole library of Eclipse Comics, which is, wow, what a deal, what a deal. Brando hits, good morning, good morning. Hope you're doing well. Gang, aside from that, that's my really quick intro to this uh, because it's holy cow. That's a bar, that is a, a steal. That is a steal, right? It, it, it's compatible to how much Marvel Comics was sold in the late 1990s to Toybiz, I believe, bought them out for $5 million or something. Like, just imagine buying the rights to Marvel Comics, buying Marvel Comics for $5 million in the 1990s wow right i'm doing great now i got my chicho fix haha <laughs> also awesome brando hits awesome brando hits gang aside from that welcome to another live stream if you want to follow this work if you want to know what this work is about i am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o for those of you that are supporting this work gang thank you very much for the support I appreciate it very much I know that by this time those of you who have been supporting this work for a long time you know what this is all about and I hope you're enjoying the content okay phony smile I thought you were gonna say 25 million what five I believe Marvel Comics was bought in the 1990s for five million dollars correct me if I'm wrong um, I was following the events at the time that it was happening right and um, yeah it, it was interesting it was interesting Rando, it's your camera tripod setup looks like a archaeological tank site setup <laughs> awesome <laughs> indiana chicha jones nice it's it's this this tripod is from the 1960s okay uh german design and it was belonged to the family i grabbed it off my mom and dad I think they have Indiana Jones comics. They do have Indiana Jones comics, indeed, indeed. It was twenty-five million according to Google. Still is still okay. Twenty-five million. Still is still a, a, a theft. Spider-Man right now. The rights just to Spider-Man right now will probably sell for like two hundred million, right? Like crazy, crazy, right? And gang, if you want to know what we're doing, where we're streaming, if you want to participate in the chat, Twitch is where it's at that's where we're streaming during our live stream and we're doing a lot of live streams different topics uh this is the comic book reading sometimes we take out snippets and upload them to all the video sharing platforms we do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on minds vk gab and parlor and we do have a discord page if you want to join us on discord you can come to our Twitch channel anytime you want and type in whoop social uh, exclamation mark social and all those links will pop up including our discord page down here right so you're welcome to join us there there's like probably around 800 people there that are sharing information uh, and that's become sort of my two go-to place to share info with people instead of different censored forums right uh, and that's part of the decentralization that's taking place for live streams where we don't have any visuals which we do today we will be uploading the audios and we do upload the audios to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho chycho as podcasts and those podcasts should be available for your favorite podcasting platform including spotify and itunes and this live stream will be loaded on all four video sharing platforms including sensor 2 and gang again i'll mention this again if you are watching this content on sensor 2 begin to watch the content on the other platforms okay i had someone just recently state that uh, uh oh chicho your videos youtube is putting ads every five minutes or ten minutes they're unwatchable now for any of the videos where there's mid-roll ads in the videos youtube was initially started doing it themselves without telling me so i had to go back and undo them right but since they started doing the censorship and kicking people off and preventing us from discussing sharing information it's not a youtube anymore it's them it's a them tube it's a censor tube so what i've started doing is going back to previous videos that we have 
Now I've started from the top ones and for all those videos I'm putting in mid roll ads, letting sensor tube decide where to put them, I don't care. And for any videos that have mid roll ads in them that I've okayed, okay, sensor tube might be doing it on themselves, right? I've okayed, I will have a description in the video saying that you can watch those videos ad free on BitChute, Rumble, and Odyssey. Okay, there is a there's serious things taking place right now, and uh, we will do our best to make sure that we we do the right thing. Okay, and this is my way of trying to make sure that we are on the right side of history, and we are. Okay, there's no doubt about it that if you understand what's taking place right now we are on the right side of history and those on the wrong side of history can kiss my ass okay uh, I'm going a little hardcore in this reading because we're doing real war stories and this anthology is an anti-war anthology it's a peace anthology it's an activist anthology just reading for the last couple of days following up on who some of these creators were for this comic book wow got my blood pumping got my blood pumping and on that note gang do not forget free assange free assange free assange julian assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity for more information see wikileaks.org defend.wikileaks.org or check out our Julian Assange and WikiLeaks playlist on SensorTube for as long as it's up. Three up my boy Assange. Free up my boy Assange indeed. Free Assange, free Assange. Gang, let me take this stuff down. Should we get into the reading? Should we get into the reading? How long have we been going on this? That's about 15 minutes in. let's do our reading gang i'm going to take out the notifications take out the notifications there we are Boop. i'm going to take out the chat we'll be back after the live stream we're not going to get a chance to read everything okay there is five 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 stories in this six story five stories in this the first one is body wash okay uh I still need my beer hall for tonight. <laughs> the Elder God says. The first story is body wash. Okay. And then there's a one pager called Weekend Warriors Go to War, the National Guard and Reserves. The second story with artwork is War is a Racket. Okay. We're going to start off with that one. And then there's a story, and I want to read this one as well Citizen Soldier okay the third story matt's excited for this yeah me too me too i haven't read it yet by the way okay third story is citizen soldier and then there's a one pager like the previous one pager one pager text which is homophobia in uniform gays and lesbians in the military wow 19 by the way 1991 okay when was this comic book published 1991 okay the issue number one which is this one we bought it in the same lot this was published in 1990 uh, 1987 right so there was a four-year gap between real war stories number one and real war stories number two i haven't read this one yet either maybe at some point we'll read this one but i haven't looked into the stories in this one the number one uh who the artists or our creators are and stuff like this okay so after that one text story there's another story called pool of tears okay. and then there's another one text uh one page text article jar wars military urine testing for drugs Whoa. 1991 in comic book format right and then there's another uh story called the home treatment sounds heavy okay and it's written by the same person uh, that adapted war is a rocket joyce 
uh, Bramber. Okay. And then there's a one te one page text uh, which is called White Man's Army: Racism and Sexism in the Service. Whoa. Okay. 1991. 30 years in the past all this woke culture that you see happening all of this centralized propagated you know Mercedes Benz and all these corporations changing their logos and stuff like this all these woke people comic books were doing it in the 1980s and 90s and before that with independent comic books right that is one of the reasons i love the comic book medium so much it is on the forefront sometimes by decades of what really matters okay extremely important the last story in this is my father and his son Elder God, ex members of the military tell their stories in this full color comic from 1991. Cool, let's read this. And still frighteningly relevant today, this issue was published in conjunction with Citizen Sol Soldier, a non profit GI and veterans organization dedicated to the principles of the U.S. military, should respect the civil and human rights of its members. And that's the reason I wanted to read the uh third story in this the one after the war is iraq and i think we're going to read citizen soldier because i started reading upon citizen soldier i didn't know about it until this okay elder god continues with this uh with what this is about the comic focuses on brutality and abuses with, within the u.s military hazing reckless training needless exposure to hazardous materials abandonment of veterans deceptive recruitment practices the military's lack of accountability and more okay wow an elder god states i joined the military in 1991 i really needed this comic then yeah yeah many many people this looks like a strawberry rhino wow 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 really i'm not kidding you gang for two days i've been reading up on who these people are right some of it like it's powerful right aside from that gang i'm taking down the i took down the browser i'm going to take down the chat okay and i'm going to take down my camera i'm going to start doing the reading okay we'll come back after the reading see you guys soon Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to another live stream and welcome to another comic book reading. And this is a one-off comic book reading. It's a comic book that we picked up in a recent comic book haul. Um, and it's comic book haul number 45. And we picked this up, uh, this comic book, in a lot of about uh, 40 comics or so that we ended up paying like 50 cents a pop. Like 22, 22, we ended up paying the whole lot, which was an amazing deal. And this is, eclipse from eclipse comics okay these guys right there eclipse books and it's real war stories number two okay and it's a beautiful cover and real war stories number one was also in that lot that we picked up okay and there was only two issues in this series this one came out number one came out in 1987 and number two came out in 1991 and at the beginning of this live stream i sort of gave a list of all the different types of stories on this there's six stories um five six stories in this anthology and there's one page text stories and uh what i'm going to do i'm just going to read you the intro that elder god uh sort of found online that he posted as uh, a comment on our discord page during the live stream which sort of gives you an idea of what this comic book is about okay and let me take this off and i'll read you the the text that elder god posted while we look at the cover okay and this is quote this is what this is in this comic book and i think it's an important comic book to read 
during these times because unfortunately in my opinion we are headed towards more conflict in the world right quote ex-members of the military tell their stories in this full color a comic from 1991 and still frighteningly relevant today this issue was published in conjunction with citizen soldier a non-profit gi and veterans organization dedicated to the principles that the u.s military should respect the civil and human rights of its members the comic focuses on brutality and abuses within the u.s military hazing reckless training needless exposure to hazardous materials abandonment of veterans deceptive recruitment principles the military's lack of accountability and more and citizen soldier is the third story in this comic that we're going to read okay it's the third story in this comic and it's the second story that we're going to read because what i want to do is i want to read start off this anthology by reading war is a racket which is a book written by general smedley butler and it was adapted into comic book format in this comic book and as far as i know it's the only adaptation of war is a racket by general smedley butler in comic book format and it's the second story in this and it's written by general smedley butler and adapted by joyce bramber okay and joyce bramber was an active war anti-war activist peace activist and the widow of the creator of american splendor okay uh harvey peckar now she has that's one of the stories she's written in this it's there's another story that she's written in this as well and the artwork for that story is done by wayne van sant and he was a and he is an american war veteran from the v vietnam era right so vietnam war v veteran and he's done a lot of writing historical writing uh essays books as well as comic books uh regarding war okay and there is a ton of people that have worked on this comic book one of them being bill sequazi which is uh one of the great artists from the 1980s 1970s 1980s 1990s in comic books he did uh, the dune mini series and he he's his artwork is appears in the first story in this anthology okay and this comic book is in i would say near mint minus to very fine near mint condition i would say near mint minus okay 9.2 uh, it's in great shape fantastic shape and the back cover for this is trippy I, I looked up the back cover on this take a look at this take a look at this thing what's wrong with this picture the u.s military is holding a training exercise operation just cause it's there in beautiful uh panaragua uh, our southern neighbor all right what's wrong with this picture it's like waldo right where's waldo what, what's wrong with this picture and there's numbers on this right look at the pyramid the all-seeing eye right illuminati helicopter crashing into it donkey and two-headed donkey thing look at that thing where is it poop from soldier carrying banana oh look at this what's that what's that what's number 11 what is that a mad scientist trying to give soldiers something what's going on what's going on what's number 11 and the text down here it shows what these are the military's jar wars drug testing program has led to personal personnel being uh, misdiagnosed due to false positive readings 
from urine tests right that's their urine samples this is by the way gang during the 1990s it was sort of build up to the first invasion of Iraq there weren't too many mainstream sources that were anti-war right. look at this look at this the first story let me give you the stories in this and here's the artwork for the first story beautiful painted pages right Look at that. body wash editor's statement we're going to read this what is citizen soldier and editor's statement right. check this out let's read the fine print on this and then we'll read the what's on the front page of this thing or back of the front page real war stories and copyright 1991 eclipse entertainment number two first printing january 1991 published by eclipse comics post office box 1099 uh, forestville california 95436 dean mulaney Mul Mul publisher kathleen your wood editor okay. uh, editor-in-chief jo uh, Joyce Branber editor and Joyce Branber is the writer that did the adaptation of uh, wars Iraq and she's written another story in this it's the first story we're gonna read for this thing front cover copyright 1991 Paul Galancy body wash copyright 1991 Jim Norcos and Bill Sukwalsi, I'm, I'm brutalizing that name. My, pro, my, my apologies. War is a racket. Uh, copyright 1991. Joyce Braber and John Van Sant. Citizen Sol Soldier, and these are all the stories in this. Citizen Soldier, copyright 1991. Kim Yale and Dean Motor. Uh, Pool of Tears, copyright 1991. Greg Brasden and Stefan De Stefano. The Home Treatment, copyright 1991. Joyce Braber and Dennis Francis. My Father and His Son, copyright 1991. Uh, Mike W. Barr and Mark Badger. Weekend Warriors Go to War. Jar Wars, White Man's Army, and Homophobia in Uniform copyright 1991 Todd Ensign and Rebecca Huntington back cover copyright 1991 Paul Mavrides all rights reserved and one of the things I found out about this comic when I was looking up all these writers and creators and stuff the last couple of days was Eclipse Books was active I believe in the 1970s late 1970s 1980s really a lot of 1980s and early 1990s and they went bankrupt during the distributor wars comic book distributor wars in the 1990s that occurred and in mid 1990s todd mcfarland bought their entire library for twenty five thousand dollars okay wow 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 let's read this front back of the front cover gang must be done must be done quote if things like that went on i would have to say something like that would be very difficult to hide in in an open society it's kind of like you know if somebody if you had eight or nine soldiers do something really awful sooner or later somebody's going to find out about it you can't hide things in america lieutenant colonel john collin u.s army and knowing history we know that the u.s military does does hide things and all militaries 
really. But thanks to organizations like WikiLeaks and whistleblowers, we've come to discover some of the lies and atrocities that have been committed, right? And here's a little write-up about citizen soldier. Let's see if we can get this thing focused. There we go. What is citizen soldier? Citizen Soldier is a nonprofit GI veterans organization founded in 1969 by both uh, peace activists and Vietnam veterans. Citizen Soldier is dedicated to the principle that the U.S. military should respect to the fullest possible extent the civil and human rights of its members. Our newspaper, On Guard, brings a message of peace and non-intervention non -intervention to active duty uh, personnel. It also provides a forum for GIs to discuss common problems and solutions. In keeping with the American tradition of the citizen, citizen soldier, we believe the military must always be subject to civilian control. Each citizen has a responsibility to assist in defending this country and to support legal military activities. We also defend the rights of persons who refuse military participation because of moral or religious beliefs. The military has a duty to be truthful, humane, and just to the fullest extent possible. We believe that service members should participate fully in civilian society and that any attempt to isolate GIs or treat them as second-class citizens should be opposed. Citizen Soldier accepts no funds from any government agency and is not uh, connected to any uh, business, law firm, or political party. We are entirely supported by individual contributions and a few foundations. As we go to press, Citizen Soldier is representing two young servicemen who do not want to be sent to the Persian Gulf with the U.S. Army. With dramatic changes taking place within, the Eastern, within Eastern Europe and events unfolding in the Middle East, it's time for America to reevaluate the mission and purpose of its military. Real War Stories number two offers a unique opportunity for the discussion of these as well as other issues facing service members today. Todd and sign, signed. Okay. And here is editor's statement by Joyce Bramber. Okay. Eclipse published Real War Stories number one on behalf of CCCO the Central Committee for Conscientious Objectors, a nonprofit military and draft counseling organization. The book made, made waves, waves. In an Atlant Atlanta, Georgia federal court, Lieutenant Colonel John Culler, a special witness dispatched by the Department of Defense in, in an attempt to stop CCOs distribution of the comic wow 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 testified that he did not find real war stories very real at all specifically colin stated that quote greasing end quote a vicious form of hazing portrays in real portrayed in real war stories number one did not exist however lieutenant colonel uh, colonel collins arguments were defeated after the U.S. Navy's own records were introduced as evidence. The Department of Defense later notified the CCO that they were uh, calling it quits. CCO one, a comic book th uh, threat, a comic book threat to national security, went back into uh, pub uh, public high schools. Something to pick up with the recruitment pamphlets that get handed out on career day. Wow, wow, wow. I really don't think Lieutenant Colonel Colin knew about the brutal hazing 
of new recruits that we re, uh, reported in real war stories number one all the men who go to court and testify in their official capacity ever uh, embarrassed or painted by such confrontations when an outfit like citizen soldier stands beside someone in uniform do these guys ever stop look up or even reconsider in real war number one we published a story that was hard to look at trouble is these ne these next weren't that hard to find trouble is these next weren't that hard to find by Joyce Braber brand Brabner right and the comic that they're talking about is this one and I had no idea they tried to censor this book the military tried to take uh, get this book out of the hands of youth right amazing amazing what a piece of history what a piece of history and if you were around during those days the early days of the 19 or late 1980s when the Iron Curtain was falling in the early 1990s when US military went into like super high gear and they with the invasion with the first Gulf War those were crazy times because you could see the shift happening in the global geopolitics and it's phenomenal that people like these people were putting up a fight putting up a fight okay. fantastic as you can tell I'm crazy excited to have this comic really I didn't know about this comic until I came across the the lot that we ended up buying and there were other comics in there that I was mainly interested in getting and just looking up all the different comic books uh, I think we might end up reading this too we'll see how our time goes but wow 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 look at this look at this Kennedy Nixon Reagan Bush look at that look at that he's got a band-aid between the between the eyes right wow 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 Nixon with his peace symbol crazy these need to be scanned in and put out as memes here's Reagan right now is that a flashlight shining through his head as if there's nothing there right Nicaragua invasion of Nicaragua this is check this out this is Kennedy Cuban Missile Crisis 1961 the world almost went into nuclear war right Nixon Cambodia 1970 right the illegal bombing of Cambodia for the Vietnam War where they killed two million people right Reagan invasion of Nicaragua right Panama came either right after or before right that is band-aid on Kennedy's forehead right assassinated there's huge huge story behind the Kennedy assassination right Reagan Nicaragua Panama came during the Bush time I believe right and here's Bush yeah and Panama Bush senior Panama 1989 right CIA wow and this artwork is done by Bill Sikowski uh, the person that did Dune and one of the most highly regarded artists from the 1980s in comic book here's a one pager uh, weekend warriors go to war the National Guard and Reserves text is by Todd Ensign right and he's uh, Todd Ensign is the person that wrote the intro regarding citizen soldier right art is by Rebecca Huntington 
It's regarding the invasion of Honduras. Look at that. You should have seen, you should have seen during that period how proud many Americans were that they went and killed hundreds of peoples and invaded Nicaragua or sorry Honduras and Nicaragua and all of them South America and Latin America right crazy gang let's read our first story okay let's read our first story from real war stories number two published in 1991 and this story is war is a racket okay written as a book by general smedley butler until like a decade ago the most decorated marine in u.s history and he wrote the book in the 1920s i believe we did a reading of it and I'll have the link in the description of this video once it's been uploaded to sensor to shoot and rumble so if you're watching this reading if you want to have a read through the book we did a audio reading of it uh, and it is available on SoundCloud as well as an audio book where I ended up reading the entire book and you can find the book for free online it is one of the most important books uh, in history it's a, it should be this book, War is a Rocket by General Smedley Butler, should be mandatory reading in every high school in the United States and Canada and the Western world, really. And it should be mandatory reading every year, in my opinion. Okay, grade 8, grade 9, grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12. And I think every year kids should have to read this book and write an essay about what its implications are. Okay, now this version and as far as i know this is the only version of this comic book uh, of war is a racket in comic book format was adapted by joyce brabner and joyce brabner is the widow of the author of american splendor and she was a activist anti-war activist peace activist the art is by wayne van sant and he was a vietnam war veteran and he wrote a lot of uh he's done a few different comic books um regarding war and it was a peace activist as well right uh the letters is by diane valentino and colors is by sam parsons okay that's one of the longer intros regarding a comic book uh because we're going to be snipping this out out of the live stream and uploading it as an individual um, story okay let's have a read through this let's have a read through this and that's General Smedley Butler, I believe, right? Should be. Looks like him. Newton Square, Pennsylvania, 1934. General Butler, the taxi couldn't get through. Glad to see you. My wife's got donuts and hot coffee in the mess hall. For reporter John Spe Spevak, it was the story of a lifetime. An interview with Major General Smedley Butler, USMC retired, the first US commander in this century to have done 12 separate tours of duty in Central America. And the first man to have been twice awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, the highest military decoration his country could bestow. There are things I've seen, things I've learned that should not be left unsaid, General Smedley Butler states. I don't want to mislead you. Some people will tell you I write for a communist magazine. The reporter says
so the, who the hell cares there wouldn't be a United States if it wasn't for a bunch of radicals he says I once heard of a radical named George Washington as a matter of fact for what I read from what I've read he was an extremist a goddamn revolutionary revolutionist Smedley Butler says I was 16 when they sunk the main back to join the Marines he says war is a racket war is a racket I spent 33 years and four months in active service as a member of our country's most agile military force the Marine Corps I served in all commission commissioned ranks from a second lieutenant to major general and during that period I spent most of my time being a high-class muscle man for big business for Wall Street and for the bankers in short I was a racketeer for capitalism I suspected I was just part of a racket at the time now I am sure of it like all members of the military profession I never had an original thought until I left the service my mental fa uh, faculties remained in suspension suspended animation while I obeyed the orders of the higher-ups this is typical of everyone in the military service I helped make Mexico and especially Tam uh, Tampico safe for American oil interests in 1914. I helped make Haiti and Cuba a decent place for the National City Bank boys to collect revenues in. Look at all the dead bodies. We supervised elections in Haiti, and whenever we su uh, supervised them, our candidates always won. I helped in the raping of a dozen Central American republics for the benefit of Wall Street. I helped purify Nicaragua for the International Banking House of Brown Brothers in 1909 to 1912 I brought light to the Dominican Republic for American sugar interest in 1916 I helped make Honduras 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 right for American fruit companies in 1903 in China in 1927 I helped see to it that standard oil went its way unmolested looking back looking back I feel I might have given Al Capone a few tips the best he could do was to operate his racket in three city districts we marines operated on three continents
on guard. Citizen soldier back in court for Agent Orange vets. Our boys were sent off to die with beautiful ideals painted in front of them. No one told them that dollars and cents were the real reason they were marching off to kill and die. The Econ Economy Act, passed by Congress in 1933, demanded that Spanish American, Spanish American war veterans furnish legal proof that their dis disabilities were incur incurred while in the service. Thirty-five thousand AO vets died treatment, denied treatment by VA hospital, not service connected. High tech training, a myth. Study confirms 50% of all military jobs have no civilian counterparts. Men were taken off the pension rolls, ousted from hospitals, and told to shift shift for themselves. Employment Center. State Office. People have been led to believe that Congress is lavishing its paternal care upon every ex-serviceman including the veterans veteran who has acquired flat feet pounding the pavement in search of a job on guard Free to 90s cutbacks close VA doors to low income vets. They will tell you that any veteran who breaks his leg in an automobile, automobile accident only suddenly needs his uh, tonsils removed, Simple, simply has to go to a government hospital to get the necessary treatment at the expense of the taxpayer. As a result of disclosures of World War I intrigues, men and women have been endeavoring to chart new paths towards peace. Our neut neutrality measures prohibit the ex export of the rifles, ammunition, and other products to nations at war, but there are, there are ways and means of evading such embargoes. Machine guns can, as they have been in the past, shipped as sewing machines. Cannons can be camouflaged as locomotive parts and with the necessary bribes placed aboard ships. They're arming people. Four veterans fast to protest Central American policy.
veterans for peace I wonder who these are is that General Smithy Butler testifying in Congress in the Senate In July of 1932, over 20,000 veterans and their families marched on Washington and camped on the edge of the Capitol to protest the failure of Congress to honor America's pledge to its fighting men. We let Hoover know prosperity was not just around the corner. In 1933, the mortality rate among World War vets was three times as great as among those who had stayed at home. of war boys with a normal viewpoint had been taken out of the fields and offices and factories and put into the ranks there they were remolded they were made made over they were made to about face to regard murder as the order of the day they were put shoulder to shoulder and through mass psychology they were made into machines for slaughter we trained them to kill other men with nonchalance and dispatch we used them a couple of years Then suddenly we discharged them and told them to make another belt face. Only this time they had to do their own re readjusting without mass psychology, without officers' aid and advice, without nationwide propaganda. We turned them loose without three minute speeches, without parades. many too many of these fine young boys were eventually destroyed mentally because they could not take that final about face alone The war racket can be stopped. You know the death and the and misery I've seen in my lifetime need not be repeated over and over again from generation to generation. You veterans listening to me now, it's up to all of us to do the best we can to prevent yet another generation of war veterans from existing. We must put ourselves out of existence, my friends. Future generations will praise us if we do and damn us to hell if we fail.
1985, General Smedley Butler was again honored by his country when a group of veterans working for peace organized themselves as the Smedley Butler Brigade. Citizen soldier. War is a Racket by General Smedley Butler. Right. Wow, wow, wow. Nineteen ninety one published. His book, I think, was published in nineteen thirty three. So much dialogue. A lot of this is taken uh, straight from his book. I believe his book starts off with what he's written here on the first page. Uh, if I recall correctly beautiful artwork very classic very classic very classic a lot of the text in the background is uh, in Spanish I believe it's in Spanish what am I or is it Latin consecutor manga aliqua I don't know what language that is. Is that in Spanish? Dues atom the I don't know, I don't think it's in Spanish. Latin. It's in Latin. It is in Latin, isn't it? I wonder what it says in Latin. Anybody know Latin? Hundred percent. Non libre. Tempor com soluca soluta nobis. I think I saw this same text somewhere else. It's called Lorem Epossum. Background text, I think. Is it Lorem Epossum? Let's read the second story, gang. Just a visual element, okay? Let's read the second story. And this second story, do they have the names of the artists and stuff? Oh, there it is. So this second story, okay. The comic reading is going fantastic citizen soldier okay. citizen soldier from real war stories number two by eclipse comics eclipse book books published in 1991 okay and it's the main story of this issue and this is only a two issue series that Eclipse Comics put out the first issue was put out in 1987 number one and at the beginning of this last stream we found out that uh, the US military actually tried to stop them from having the book available to the youth to read because of the hazing stories military hazing stories in the book and citizen soldier is a veterans group basically where they try to they did a little write up here and it's a non-profit gi veteran organization founded in 1969 where we read the story behind it right trying to sort of 
advocate for veterans, uh, U.S. military veterans. So let's see what this story is about. And this is the third story in this anthology. Citizen Soldier. Okay. Written by, let's see if we can see, get this in focus. Written by Kim Yale, artist Dean Motter, letters M. Eisman, edits Joyce Brabner. And Joyce Brabner was the editor in chief for this series. And we just uh, finished reading uh, the second story in this anthology, which was War is a Racket by General Smedley Butler. Okay. We got a little cat thing going going on with the machine kicking in. We'll wait a couple of minutes for the sound to go away. Let's have a flip through and then we'll have a read through that. Apologies about that gang. I usually unplug that machine before starting the readings. This is the first story for this. Body washing. I wonder what this is about. Because I don't think we're going to get a chance to read this one. Beautiful artwork, beautiful painted pages. Absolutely beautiful. Let's see if we can get this in focus. Look at that. Oh, wow. This has got to be about waterboarding. Is this about waterboarding? Torture? Yeah, it is. Oh my god. Or hazing. This is about hazing. Look at that. Look at that. go read it let's go read the third story in this whoop <laughs> this story citizen soldier right it's a third story in this real war stories number two from eclipse comics published in 1991 Citizen Soldier, the name of a veterans organization that is geared towards advocating for U.S. veterans. Written by Kim Yale, artist Dean Motter, letters M. Eisman, edits Joyce Brabner. Rags. the background press about face a four-year bummer the airman's voice on guard and I believe on guard was a paper that citizen soldier was putting out let's see this what does this say this is your personal property and cannot be taken away Fort Knox had won, so did Fort Dix. Its name was Shakedown, Newport Naval Station, titled theirs, all hands abandoned ship, while wait 
Wright-Patterson Air Force Base called theirs the Star Spangled Bummer. The Marines said, said it all with a single nasty word, rage. That's what that is, rage. The GI underground newspapers were the most consistent, uh, consistent stateside protest during the veteran era. Some lasted for years, others folded when the men who put them out were discharged or transferred. As the war drew to its weary end, the newspapers shut down as well. Vietnam vets were systematically discharged from service to make way for less embedded, embedded more pliable volunteer armed services. The reason for, a, for the fraggings, the search and vo avoid patrols, the radical unrest and sabotage and attack carriers, an unpopular war is long over. One rarely hears of any protest among soldiers or sailors. On Guard, the paper published by Citizen Soldier, a nonprofit GI and veterans rights group, is proof that discontent and dissent still exist. Hi, um, I was told I could call this number and find out about AIDS testing. I'm in the army and I need to know what will happen to me if I refuse. Uh, I guess I'd better tell my story. I tried using the chain of command, but no one's doing a damn thing about it. The equipment's unsafe and someone's going to get hurt, maimed, even killed. Hi, I'm in the eighth grade and I'm doing a term paper on Agent Orange and I was wondering if I could send me, if you, if you could send me some information. Eight and a half years of hard work wiped out because I was honest about being gay, because I was true to the oath of my commission that I would not lie. I want to fight it, but I'll need help. Each issue of On Guard reflects the uh, paramount concern of citizen soldier, the dem democratization of the military system, making it accountable to society at large and re responsive to the needs of his personnel and families. Every day, citizen soldier receives calls from men and women, enlisted, enlisted an officer on active duty or in the reserves who believe their human and civil rights have been infringed upon by military policies and practices. Changes are if you call citizen ch chances are if you call citizen soldier Trisha Pretchfield will answer. Trisha sought citizen soldiers assistance in obtaining a release from the air bay from the air force as a conscientious objector in 1983. 
she's been in a an integral part of citizen soldier now for eight years press releases fundraising screening and processing calls you name it trisha does it Beep. the answering machine goes off amazing after all these years we're still getting inquiries about agent orange so this is this was a call coming in to her i believe regarding agent orange and agent orange was a chemical that the u.s military used uh, in vietnam in cambodia and in that region uh, and they sprayed it everywhere and it's pure poison and uh, monsanto had a role to play in it i believe it was amplified uh, pesticide military grade pesticide that was used for de killing off the vegetation so the soldiers uh, could see through they wouldn't be ambushed and stuff and poisoned everything poisoned everything continuing with the comic gay men and women love their country too every time I put on my guard uniform I feel a great sense of pride that's another message there's the paper on guard bring by challenging the military's efforts to discharge me I'm standing up for the right of Americans to enjoy sexual expression without click bring oh so someone was leaving a message she picks up the phone hello citizen soldier she answers that's a beautiful piece really I see you're calling on behalf of your son he signed with the marine uh, reserves for the money for college and the terms of enlistment were misrepresented to him wow, man. they're recruiting join the marine uh oh she's not happy about it They promised that field training would not disrupt his college studies and that he would be excused from drills when he had exams or term papers. Now he's getting hassled. It's interfering with his grades, yes, and now he wants out. History of Western Civilization, C minus, wow. That's not good grades. No, your son's not the only one. Unfortunately, we receive plenty of calls and complaints about recruitment practices. Ah, oh, look at this real picture in there. they'll tell you you're going to be a pilot and you don't have a high school education false promises bait and switch tactics blatant lies threats and intimidation of enlistees all in the name of an established quota system which recruiters are under intense pressure to meet so the ends justify the means forge the signature of a 17 year old recruit old recruits estranged father on the enlistment papers don't mention that on a delayed entry enlistment contract 
a person isn't legally obligated to report for active duty unless they swear a second oath which places them on active duty wow look at that what what top the golden career opportunities portrayed in the commercials and films like top gun and then sign the guy up for whatever slot needs to be filled overqualified underqualified for the position it doesn't matter fill the quota a third of the jobs in the army and marines are either with infantry artillery or tanks almost half the navy jobs involve extended tours of sea duty the number of qualified people who actually get the high-tech training is very small and listees find that written promises for a specific job assignment aren't binding the army isn't obligated to train you as a radar technician the navy isn't obligated to place you in navigation school hey buddy your scores are too are good but all my school openings are closed right now after you complete basic you can reapply for computer tech or electrician or sonar or nuclear yes tomorrow afternoon is fine back to the citizen office right yes tomorrow afternoon is fine how about 1 15 good no please feel free to come along we want you to find out more about citizen soldier by now by now good morning how many messages he asks too many the most important one is still on the machine another call call came in before I could finish listening to it and this time you're helping an eighth grader with her paper on agent orange wow drink on guard was delivered but I haven't looked uh, through a copy yet I just finished with another recruitment call the guy will be in in with his father tomorrow fine do the intake and I'll review exactly what kind of case we've got and how we can help you answer it I want to read my morning paper with my coffee she says and the phone was ringing Bring. hello citizen soldier Todd Ensign speaking haha <laughs> Todd Ensign the end and Todd Ensign so it looks like it was a two-person operation so far but it must have been more people in there right and Todd Ensign is the person that wrote the doop, little statement here regarding who citizen soldier is right Todd Ensign very cool very cool very cool what a historical piece crazy crazy very cool very cool gang let's just flip through the rest of this book gang because mark metals are you still here let me know if you're still here homophobia in uniform gays and lesbians in the military yeah uh, David uh, one two seven three this is the comic real war stories number two published in 1991 okay and one of the reasons like I was extremely excited to read this book to grab this book and have this book in my collection aside from this crazy amazing this needs to become a poster like look at this thing i'm going to try to scan this in gang 
uh, like take a picture of it, a really good picture of it, and post it on our Discord. Like phenomenal, right? Was because I wanted to read this. War is a racket by. It's a book by General Smedley Butler. Right. And we've done a reading of this book. Uh, War is a racket by General Smedley Butler. And you can find the. Here, let me post it in our on if you go to this patreon post i believe it's the third post it'll provide a link to sensor 2 which i did the reading for is the first place i uploaded it uh in 2017 and i uploaded it to discord uh not discord to bitchute rumble and odyssey and we have the audio on soundcloud as well as a podcast so it's a reading of war is a racket by general smithley butler his book which is available for free to read online agencies that provide military related counseling look at this i don't know if citizen soldier is still around or not it'd be cool to find out i should i should i didn't look it up it's crazy eh? i should have looked it up youth against military militarism project st louis friends for peace committee Military law panel. Wow, wow, wow. Ah, look at this. Looks like it's a book by Todd Ensign. The Insider's Guide to What You Should Know Before You Enlist. Available at your local bookstore. Your granddad's still alive from World War II. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, look at this one. This story, this story is uh, homophobia in uniform, gays and lesbians in the military. Crazy artwork, super cool. Look at that. Pool of Tears. Oh, wait a second. This is no, no, this is the text. Uh, military, sorry, Paul. Uh, homophobia in uniform, gays and lesbians in the military. This is Pool of Tears, right? By Greg uh, Basden and S. Uh, De Stefano. Very cool. Whoa, look at this comic style pool of tears oh look at this look at this and the court neglected to note that VBA benefits are also uh, discretionary denied this is like a spoof off uh, Alice in Wonderland right there's a Cheshire cat or what's this called? Haha, <laughs> there's the tea party. Look at that. What a trippy, trippy story. Look at that. Trippy artwork. The tea party with the Mad Hatter. Happy Pride Month. Off oh, with her sidious head. The queen, the mad queen. Look at that. They want to cut, chop off her head. Look at that. Very cool. Very cool. Whoa, look at this. Ah, what a crazy panel this is beautiful Alice please wake up you're in a dream please Alice please wake up Statue of Liberty looking down there's Alice 
sleeping on our feet. Very cool, very cool. Jar Wars, military urine testing for drugs. The home treatments, I can only guess what this one is. Soldiers returning, how they're treated. Wow, script. Script is by uh, Joyce Bradner again. Art is by Dennis Francis. Very cool. Oh wow, look at this. Lynching. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Look at that, soldiers dying in the river. This comic is crazy, crazy cool elder god. Very cool. Wow, look at this one. And then there's another one pager. White man's army, racism and sexism in the service. My father and his son. Next story, the last story in this uh, anthology. My father and his son, by Mark uh, Mike W. Barr and Mark Badger. I never knew my father. He died before I was born. When I was a kid, it got pretty confusing. Pretty cool artwork. superhero action as well I know it influenced the kinds the kinds of stories I like to read and to watch I'm very very proud to be your son Ellery yes dad every month Tommy Parker and his father visit the 25th century space museum not to mention the kind I like to write, although not always positively. Gabe, that's the only thing my father ever said I agreed with. Bard, he's the man who killed my father. But while researching his death, he became a person to me for the first time. ends with a cool my wife and I want to have children someday cool what's this coup d'etat whoa what coup d'etat Oh my god, I gotta get my hands on this. The Kennedy assassination trading cards. And this is one thing I found out with uh, with uh, Eclipse Comics. They were the first 
comic book publishers to produce let me get this in focus eclipse comics eclipse books they were the first comic book publishers to put out comic book trading cards right so this looks like one of their first trading cards man i wonder if you can get your hands on this coup d'etat right what john fitzgerald kennedy assassinated look at the american flag assassination card whoa what the marilyn monroe look at the art on this amazing amazing look at this lee harvey oswald look at that wow jack ruby oh man what does that say can we even read that it's in light blue trading cards by uh paul uh bancato and bill yeah that's what it is bill uh since kowalski the guy did the blade runner uh, for the first time ever all the conspiracy theories in a box set of 36 color cards oh my god i wish i could get my hands on this coup d'etat look at that ten dollars i pay 50 right now really a wrong contra scandal look at this other trading cards i would love to get my hands on all these uh, must find these so iran contra scandal the bush league whoa friendly dictators oh my god rotten to the core yes to order send your name and address a check or money order to us funds only all prices postpaid along with this coupon to eclipse uh entertainment p.o box uh 1099 uh, forestville california nine five four three six <laughs> yeah i pay i pay a lot more than that neiman says wow 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 and we looked at the back cover for this gang that's a fantastic read that was a fantastic read we only got to uh read two of the six stories in this one two three four uh five six stories we only got to read two of the six stories in this uh but well worth the read uh very happy to have this in my collection very happy to have this in my collection uh and it's in really good shape it's near mint minus minimum right beautiful maybe very fine plus near very fine near mint the worst it would be but no this is near mint minus no dings look at that i'm having a hard time focusing a little bit of ding there beautiful 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 i'm gonna go back to the live stream turn on the camera and the chat and bag this comic let me turn on video camera browse and the chat that was going and mark metals are you still here are you still here let me know 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 because if you are we got problem number five show you gang fantastic read fantastic read elder god what do you think in terms of uh someone that has been a veteran 
Agent Orange gang is insane. Let me, uh, Agent Orange, Elder God posted info about Agent Orange. I'm going to read this to you guys. Uh, quote, Agent Orange is a herbicide and defoliant chemical, one of the tactical use uh, rainbow herbicides. It is widely known for its use by the U.S. military as part of its herbicide warfare program, Operation Ranch Hand, during the vietnam war from 1961 to 1971 okay it is a mixture of equal parts of two herbicides 245-t and 24-d in addition to its damaging environmental effects traces of toxin mainly tcdd the to most toxic of its type found in the mixture have caused major health problems for many individuals who were exposed and huge number of birth defects uh, in that region wherever agent orange was used and the modern version of agent orange the program that been they used in Vietnam and Cambodia and all that region was and is being used in uh, in Colombia with plan Colombia okay and they're using a sort of a same type of herbicide thing to kill cocoa harvest cocoa plantations okay and polluting water killing people creating uh, cancer race through the roof contaminating the water supply insanity insanity right kyle m parker hello hello welcome to the last stream street name lehman i've seen some photos of people that have been affected uh, by agent orange and what their children look like to it's horrible it's horrible and agent orange recently the people from that region uh, they filed cases against the u.s government u.s military for what they did and recently i think in the last year or two years they in new york appellate court or something like this they lost the case the u.s court said no you can't sue the u.s military for contaminating a country for 10 years and all these birth defects it's just the whole thing is just insane right you just found them for 25 bucks elder god max wild i wrote my master's thesis on the use of agent or yeah really wow 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 sleepless nice you must have had man i looked into it a long time ago it blew me away it's on the same level as using depleted uranium in iraq and, Af and afghanistan right but agent orange was uh, crazy my voice is so soothing uh, came out to thank you i'll thank my parents next time i see them uh, that's messed up how long have they been uh, doing that uh u.s military has been dropping toxins around the globe and all militaries really but u.s military is pretty heavy involved in it um, for decades contaminating yeah, the, the United States military is the single largest polluter of the world right in terms of the environment goes so all of those activists that really want to stop environmental damage the first place they should be trying to prevent is US military and as an environmentalist not an environmentalist but someone that worked as an uh, in the environmental field right earth sciences as an environmental geophysicist in the 1990s i've gone to military sites there was one decommissioned military site in yukon usd united states military sites military site in canada in yukon okay that was decommissioned in the 1970s i believe okay and we were called in there because the backhoe driver at the time he he was having his conscious took over and he said look uh, we did some stuff that i had to tell people so he blew the whistle he said when he was a backhoe driver when they were decommissioning this american military base in yukon canada at uh, bordering alaska as a backhoe driver they got him to dig a hole okay big gigantic hole and bury drums full of liquid that he didn't know what they were in the ground and cover it up and as a geophysicist uh, we got called in there because we we're level one and of doing a survey environmental survey 
to find out if there's possibility of any contamination or whatnot. We're non-intrusive. So we ran electromagnetic lines. I specifically, I did. I ran EM survey over an area and we found anomalies, metallic anomalies. The backhoe driver came. They brought new backhoe drivers. They dug very slowly, very slowly, right? Very slowly. And this was a pristine area. It was right beside a river okay no buildings no nothing it was in the wild like the only thing close by was the highway that was like a kilometer away that you had to drive through a logging road to get there right decommissioned road to get there or decommissioned road to get there right pristine we saw a gri i saw a grizzly there walking out with a salmon in his mouth grizzlies are huge okay thank god we were in a car okay this is how pristine this was we found anomalous areas mapped it out they came in investigated they found a huge section of area well we did but they dug it up slowly right they found they uncovered big drums those whatever i don't know what gallon drums there are metal drums that were rusted and there was liquid in them it went from a pristine area where nature preserve and people would go fishing and stuff to a level one contamination site cordoned off where the only people that could go in were people that were dressed up in level one gear with covered up right that's what's been going on with the u.s military for decades and that was just one site there were others okay mark metals if you're still here let me know Max Wild, it's absolutely insane how the government essentially knew it was toxic from adv advocates like Rachel Carson, yet still uh, continued to use it for 10 plus years in Vietnam. Yeah, they don't give a rat's ass. Street name Lehman. Isn't it a war crime to use weapons uh, that do permanent damage with no expectation to kill ergo gas attacks? And... Yeah tried to take him to court i went to kuwait in 1991 the propaganda we were exposed to was ridiculous but i n i never fell for it yeah desert storm insane jingle bells what's up chicho uh hope you're enjoying the ride doing my best to uh remember that it's not about the writing on the page it's about the spaces between the paragraphs that gives us time to think about what was just said in my opinion that's even more important than the text itself well said jingle bells lehman enlisted in 1990s would suck my respect for <laughs> no you don't know the the propaganda that government uses on children is insane it comes through hollywood it comes through government it comes through uh just education centralized education and indoctrination it's insane i almost joined the military cadets when i was young in high school okay kyle m parker war games board games video games you're very present and aware chicho i appreciate this my pleasure kyle lehman i've scared off black bears a few times but that will not happen with me. No, you can't scare off a grizzly. You're food for grizzly. Black bear is just more curious. I've, in, as a geophysicist in nature, I've scared off black bears as well, right? They are curious. They want to know what we're doing there. You just throw things at them and they go away and make noise and make yourself big. Grizzly? Grizzly, you back away slowly, slowly. If you got a car close by, run. Like you're in arm's reach, you open the door, get in the car drive away as fast as you can honk the horn like the grizzly can take apart a car to get to you it's just like open up a can for them right oh elder god you were a medic awesome i didn't know that or i forgot agent orange was shocking 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 controllers Zen. many of you may not know this uh, but chicho is the uncle of comic book 
reader uh, Rob Lanefield, he taught Rob how to draw feet <laughs> with my drawing technique. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Basically, my my recommendation to anyone that wants to draw feet: don't. <laughs> Hilarious controller son. I love it, love it, love it. Gang, we're into the end of the stream. Mark, uh, you dropped by, but you're not around. So, unfortunately, we got... Check this out. I got to show this just because I told uh, I told uh, Mark he was interested in Primer Comics number five. He asked me a while ago uh, if I had Primer Comics, I'd be willing to let go and I mentioned to him I had two copies and I have a graded copy. Check this out, graded at 9.4 as well. 9.4 as well, right? So I got a graded copy of Primer number five, uh, first appearance of Max, right? So very important, very important, right? By Sam Keith, right? So first appearance of Max by Sam Keith cgc graded 9.4 i'm not letting go of this one at all and we've done a reading of comico primer number five the first appearance of max we actually read this one which is a lower grade so i don't want to get rid of this one right but this one would be up uh for it okay but we'll have these handy and the reason uh, i agreed to do this with mark is because mark is when i was selling some comics on ebay last year he ended up buying Amazing Spider-Man number 361 and I was selling this it was graded at I graded at 9.4 he ended up buying it okay so I sold two of these comics Amazing Spider-Man uh, 361 last year right the first one sold for $105 or $102.50 a steal for what's going for right now right I sold that one let's say $100 graded 9.4 right and I sold this one graded 9.4 right this one mark ended up paying hundred sixty dollars for and he sent it to CGC and he sent it back to me as a gift right and CGC graded 9.6 so fantastic fantastic huge lots of love right back to mark so when he contacted me regarding primer number five I said indeed I'd be willing to let one go for him so whatever he's willing uh, to see we, we're gonna take a look at it but we'll do it at another time I just want to give the intro to this okay uh, many of the to, to, to fact checking all the gods are true uh, Kyle says Chicho I have been struggling with motivation lately how do you stay motivated to achieve your goals I get pissed off man and I, I I've taught myself to have empathy uh, education I've seen a lot of people fall through the cracks okay so I do my best trying to help them especially students kids but one of the motivations for me is I get pissed off man I get pissed off mark sorry on cell phone my connection is going in and out okay do you want to do this in another time we're into two hours so uh, it's up to you man we could do this another time or I could just show it to you and you tell me okay uh, cell phones damn cell phones interrupting our comic book comic book dealings and wheelings right comic book dealings and wheelings so motivation Kyle for me um, I take breaks as well I, I watch amazing content right like I just finished by the way I just finished Demon Slayer the series and I finished Demon Slayer the movie another time is all right okay mark we do it another time and you know what what I'll do I'll just have this handy just know that whenever I'm gonna do comic book readings I'll have the books here so whenever you want I'm not gonna uh, I'll stop messaging you because I don't want to bother you I'd hate to see uh, pixelated views of it <laughs> I know what do we do I could take pictures I'll take pictures and send them to you okay uh, and then you let me know uh, I had an offer for my prime primer comic should I sell I don't know elder God depends on the offer right depends on the offer uh, and gang by the way so good right demon so good motivation motivation demon slayer motivation I just finished the movie two nights ago right so good so good so good I'm not gonna give it away any spoilers since Akira mostly buttery animation I've seen in an anime since Akira 
uh, butter, buttery. I'm not sure if buttery is the right word. <laughs> 13, uh, 13,000 K. Is this primer number two or number uh, five? Is it primer number two? And what's it graded at? It's a, go it's a good price. For primer number two, it's a good price. For primer number three, it's a, uh, five, it's an amazing price. Get, sell it, sell it, sell it. Like, no matter what grade it is, right? If it's a 10, it would be worth 13K, right? Uh, but primer number two is going for a lot more, right? Primer number two is uh, first appearance of Grendel. Okay. Gang, let's call the stream. Thank you for being here. For those of you that want to know what this is all about, all about I am on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash chicho, C-H-Y-C-H-O. Uh, if you want to follow this work, or support this work, if you want to know what we're doing, which is basically layered on mathematics, whoop, Patreon is a great place uh, to follow the work. And I don't put anything behind paywall. Everything's Creative Commons. Share, share, like. And for those of you, as always, who are supporting this work on Patreon, gang, thank you very much for the support. It is in large part because of your support that we're able to do this and the support we're getting on Twitch. Hulk number one, 13K. I don't know. I wouldn't really sell Hulk number one for 13K, depending on the grade, though. All right? Really. Uh, we are live streaming on Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash Chicho Live. C-H-Y-C-H-O-L-I-V-E. For those of you who are on Twitch, watching these live streams live, participating in the discussion, subscribing, following, uh, just being here in the mods. Thank you for taking care of business. Kyle, thank you, Chicho. That was a very unique and practical answer. I need to find more things to to be pissed off about. My life is too ordinary, avoiding conflict. Yeah, and pick the right conflicts. Pick the right battles, right? Don't pick every battle to fight. Pick the right battles, gang. Okay, if you're picking a battle, pick the right ones and make sure you're not being used as cannon fodder and you're not being made a fool of or tool of, right? We do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on Minds, VK, Gap, and Parlor. And we do have a Discord page. You can come to our Discord on Twitch channel anytime you want. In the chat, type in exclamation mark social, and all those links will pop up. And at the bottom, you'll see our Discord page as well. Okay. It's a 9.2. I bought it in 1992. Hulk number one, 9.2 from 1960s the six issue miniseries uh the six issue i believe it was six issues that came out in 1960s hulk number one grade 9.2 i would have to look it up uh it's not actually my most valuable comic but my favorite i wouldn't sell it if if you don't need the money other oh god why would you sell it right uh to buy more comics possibly to buy more things possibly and you have to see what the going rate is. I haven't checked to see how much Hulk number one is going for. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If it's well above market value, you could buy it. Or you could sell it and then buy it back. Right? But if it's your most favorite comic and it's the only one you got, you better use that money to buy another one. <laughs> right? For live streams when we don't have any visuals, we do upload the streams to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho as a podcast, and those podcasts should be available on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify and iTunes. And we will be uploading this live stream and the segments, the readings, uh, individually, the two stories we read on SensorTube, on BitChute, on Rumble, and Odyssey. And for those of you that are supporting this work on those two on those four platforms, Thank you very much for the support gang it is because of the collective support that we're getting on these platforms that we're able to do what it is that we're doing kitty cats calling me i still am looking out for 20 ha 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 detective comics 27 it's the holy grail first appearance of batman that thing's only going to continue to go up in price right if you can get it get it right like the amount of money that's been put into circulation uh, collectibles they're fetching a premium price everything's gone up in price uh, and it will remain so until interest rates really kick up fast and liquidity drops but I don't know when that's gonna happen tell you the truth I don't know when that's gonna happen gang aside from that I might do a random comic book haul live stream this week if we end up getting a comic book haul and I'll keep the setup here just in case we feel like doing another reading uh, I'm not sure when I'm gonna announce the next set 
maybe mid this week okay uh, so we're gonna have a you know I won't have any schedule anything scheduled live streams back to back for the next few days I just want to upload uh, what we have uh, uh, the videos that's little segments that I've still yet to upload and I have to go through the current events live stream and stuff and take those out and upload those so we've got a whole bunch of videos still yet to upload I hope you have a fantastic weekend everyone and I'll see you guys in the next live stream or on discord bye everyone movies I know Elder God I know <laughs> bye everyone